Hello, and welcome to the tutorial series for TIBCO Data Virtualization, or TDV. Tutorials are brief instructional videos that demonstrate specific features of TDV. In this tutorial, we discuss the use of LDAP domains, TDV. Note that tutorials are not meant to be comprehensive training modules. Instead, they demonstrate a very basic use case that can be built quickly and easily. However, the data virtualization knowledge base contains additional information that will help you learn more and go deeper. Additional resources in the knowledge base include resources used to build the tutorial, such as data virtualization archive files, data source files, and a document version of this tutorial, and additional information including documentation and training materials. Here is our agenda. We begin by defining TDV LDAP domains and outlining their importance for our customers. Next, we walk through a very basic demo of using a TDV LDAP domain to define groups and users. Finally, we summarize the contents of this tutorial. Let's begin by defining TDV LDAP domains and examining their importance for data virtualization. TDV domains are containers for defining and assigning rights to TDV groups and users. TDV supports three types of domains. The composite domain is for groups and users that are completely managed within the TDV product suite. There is one and only one composite domain within a TDV instance. The dynamic domain is for pass-through authentication to underlying physical data sources. There may be at most one dynamic domain within a TDV instance. LDAP domains within TDV interface with existing enterprise deployments of lightweight directory access protocol products such as Active Directory, eDirectory, or iPlanet. There may be zero, one, or many LDAP domains within a TDV instance. LDAP domains are important to enterprise customers because they enable TDV to leverage existing security policy that is embodied in their LDAP deployments. This means that system administrators can define users and groups once in their LDAP systems and do not have to perform extra work to define these users and groups in TDV. This ensures that TDV will remain consistent with enterprise security policies as groups and users change over time. Next, let's walk through a very basic demo of LDAP domains in TDV. Here is the business problem we illustrate in this tutorial. This enterprise wants a small group of TDV administrators to be managed directly through the TDV composite domain. However, we want all other users, including developers, analysts, and salespeople, to be managed within Microsoft's Active Directory, which provides a single point of management for all of their enterprise authentication needs. TDV will leverage this Active Directory infrastructure and automatically adapt as users come and go from Active Directory. Whenever you work with LDAP and TDV, you may find it useful to have an LDAP browser utility handy. The Softera LDAP browser shown here is a free download and works quite well. It will help you understand the schema and contents of any particular LDAP instance. It will also help you build the exact URL you will need to specify in TDV and help you verify that your credentials are accurate and properly formatted. An LDAP browser, such as the Softera browser shown here, allows us to test connectivity to our LDAP directory before we try to configure TDV. It also helps us understand the structure of the LDAP directory so we can verify that our LDAP.properties file has been configured correctly. To connect to an LDAP directory, we begin by right-clicking the top of the namespace tree and selecting New Profile. We provide a name for the profile and then specify the host and port. Once we have specified the host and port, we can click the Fetch Base DNs button to populate a drop-down list of available entry points to the directory schema. 
DN stands for Distinguished Name, which is a unique identifier in LDAP. In this example, our data exists in an Active Directory application partition with a distinguished name of Organization equals Demo Corp, Country equals US, as shown here. Now we specify the ID and password. Click Save Password to make subsequent access easier. The LDAP data is now available to us. Before you connect TDV to an LDAP server, you must supply a properly configured LDAP.properties file. This provides details about the specific schema of the LDAP instance you are integrating. This file must be placed in the directory shown here. Before we begin, let's level set on some of the technical underpinnings of LDAP domains in TDV. First of all, it is important to understand that TDV reads the LDAP repository but never writes to it. This is an important requirement for LDAP administrators. When we first define the LDAP domain, TDV will download LDAP groups that are specified in our LDAP.properties file. If groups are added and deleted frequently, we may want to resynchronize from time to time. It is not necessary to resynchronize as users are added and deleted. Once our groups are downloaded, we will assign them rights and privileges within TDV. We use LDAP for authentication, but authorization is still determined within TDV. This is appropriate because authorization controls are very specific to data virtualization resources, and LDAP has no knowledge of these resources, which include views, procedures, transformations, and so on. Although we have created groups, no users will be created in TDV until they actually attempt to log in to TDV. At login time, TDV asks the LDAP server to authenticate the user. This demo uses simple password-based authentication, but Kerberos authentication may also be implemented. If the authentication is successful, and if this is the user's first login, TDV will then create the user and assign it to the groups to which it belongs. As our LDAP browser shows, for this particular LDAP deployment, our TDV users reside in three different organizational units, Development, Eagle, and Sales. These containers are defined by default as part of the Active Directory installation and contain no data. Within each organizational unit, we have defined users and groups. Within each group, we have also defined users as members of the group. The roles container is also installed by default and contains various containers for administrative roles. Note that we have also defined a user named TDV reader. This user has been assigned to the group named Readers, which means it can read data from Active Directory but cannot make any changes. We will use TDV Reader as the user that TDV Manager employs to read data from Active Directory. Now that we understand the structure of our specific LDAP directory, let's see how the TDV LDAP.properties file has been configured to use this directory. The properties file contains four sections. Section 1 defines the query parameters that TDV will use to find all users. We specify that TDV should search three organizational unit containers, Sales, Development, and Eagle. We specify that we are only interested in user objects. An LDAP user may have many attributes. We choose the UID attribute as the one that will be used as this TDV login. You may choose any attribute that your organization wishes to use as the TDV user ID. We specify no timeout period for the query. Section 2 defines the query parameters that TDV will use to find all groups. We specify that TDV should search three organizational unit containers, sales, development, and eagle. We specify that we are only interested in group objects. An LDAP group may have many attributes. 
we choose the CN, or common name attribute, as the one that will be used as the TDV group name. We specify no timeout period for the query. Section 3 defines the parameters that TDV will use to authenticate a user at login time. We specify a case-sensitive lookup. We specify that TDV should search three organizational unit containers, Sales, Development, and Eagle. We specify that we are looking for a user object with a UID attribute that matches the TDV login. Once we find a match, we specify that the UID attribute is the data we want returned to TDV. We specify a timeout period of 1000 milliseconds. Section 4 defines the parameters that TDV will use to find all of a user's LDAP group memberships. We specify that TDV should search three organizational unit containers, Sales, Development, and Eagle. We specify that we are looking for group objects that have a member with the distinguished name that will be passed by TDV. The group name we want returned to TDV resides in the LDAP CN or common name attribute. We specify a timeout period of 1000 milliseconds. Now we are ready to create the LDAP domain in TDV. We log into TDV Manager and select Domain Management from the Users tab, then click Add Domain. We fill in the required information. To find the exact URL we need, we can look at the connection properties from our LDAP browser. The URL is found on the Profile tab, and the login name is found on the Credentials tab. When we click OK, the LDAP domain is created. Now we can add groups to the domain. We select the domain and click Edit External Groups. We select all the groups and click OK. Now we can assign rights to a group. We navigate to Group Management, choose the Architects group, and click Edit Group. We'll give the architects rights from the developer template, which allows them to access Studio. Our architects group now has rights assigned to it. However, the group still has no users. That's because TDV does not create a user from an LDAP group until that user actually logs in for the first time. Let's log in as a member of the Architects group, Archie Architect. We use the UID attribute from LDAP as the username and enter the password. We specify LDAP demo as the domain. As we log in and see that Archie has access to the shared folder and a blank My Home folder because he is a new user. If you get an error message at login time, and you are on a slow network connection, you may want to adjust the timeout period in the LDAP.properties file. When we go to User Management in TDV Manager, we can see that Archie is now defined as a user. He is a member of the Architects group as well as the All group. Our demo is complete. Let's review what we have seen in this tutorial. TDV domains are containers for defining and assigning rights to TDV groups and users. TDV ports three types of domains. The composite domain is for groups and users that are completely managed within the TDV product suite. There is one and only one composite domain within a TDV instance. The dynamic domain is for pass-through authentication to underlying physical data sources. There may be at most one dynamic domain within a TDV instance. LDAP domains within TDV interface with existing enterprise deployments of lightweight directory access protocol products, such as Active Directory, eDirectory, or iPlanet. There may be zero, one, or many LDAP domains within a TDV instance. LDAP domains are important to enterprise customers 
because they enable TDV to leverage existing security policy that is embodied in their LDAP deployments. This means that system administrators can define users and groups once in their LDAP systems and do not have to perform extra work to define these users and groups in TDV. This ensures that TDV will remain consistent with enterprise security policies as groups and users change over time. Thank you.